Welcome, welcome, welcome to New Life. Would you high five your neighbor as you're being seated? Let them know the battle belongs to the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord. I'm so excited to be here. My name is Andrew Paz. I'm the high school youth pastor here at New Life. It's such an honor, such an honor to be here with you guys. Pastor Steve and Pastor Tammy, they are actually away. They're preaching right up the road, up the grade in Newberry Park at a friend's church, and we send our love and our prayers. How many of you guys are grateful for our senior pastors who are committed to God's word and God's people? I love them so, so much, and I am so blessed to be a part of this community. There are some amazing, amazing, amazing people of God that are doing some amazing things through the church of new life, through God's body, his, the big church, right? I, I, this is just an honor to see everything that God is doing through our city, through our community, and through this church. Amen. Give God one last praise, man. Amen. Well, before we dive in, I actually want to make a promise. I love to, to do this every time I have the honor to preach. I promise you that I will give you everything I have. I've been at the feet of Jesus. I've been asking this Holy Spirit to reveal scripture. I've been studying. I've been, at, I've been at the feet of him. I ask that you would lean in today. So if I promise this to you, would you promise that you will give me everything you have? Pen in one hand, Bible in another hand. Some of you have your charge Bibles, which is dope. That's fine too. Some of you have iPads. That's awesome. We love it, man. Multi-generational, amen? <laughs> Pastor Wayne, we love you. How many of you guys, before we dive in, how many of you guys know, love that new song that we just sang, Sea of Victory? Woo! Love it, love it, love it. Elevation, they kill it. Jesus culture's better, but I don't wanna get into that with you guys. I'm gonna have fun this service. It's a powerful, powerful song, and I highlight that, and I wanted us to go back into that, because we're actually gonna be talking about this big concept. It's a biblical concept. That bridge, that lyrical line with the enemy intended for evil, God will use for good, that is biblical truth. That is Bible that we are singing. And to be honest with you, it is a really big concept to understanding God's word. And I feel there are so many of us in this room that struggle with that, including myself, understanding this huge concept. And my prayer today is that we would understand the evil, the problems we face. God is bigger, God is stronger, His word is true, and we can walk in the victory of Jesus Christ, the finished work of Jesus Christ. And so I want us to look at this big concept because, man, let me ask you guys this before we jump, jump in. How many of you guys were at our New Life Conference last week? God is so faithful. And he is so good. And I bring that up because I'm actually a living testimony to God's goodness. You see, I grew up in the church. I was taught church. I, didn't, I wasn't taught Christ. And if you know anything about my story, I, I rebelled from the Lord. And I did a lot of stupid decisions. How many of you guys have been there? You guys know what I'm talking about? Some of you are sitting next to your decision. I'm joking. That's terrible. That's, don't look at that. No, it, okay. No, I, I made some terrible decisions and I rebelled and I'll be honest with you, I did a lot of evil things. I did a lot of evil things. I get choked up every time. And to see God's goodness. I remember it was in 2012. It was, coincidentally, it was at a Jesus Culture Conference where I stood in the presence of the Lord saying, Lord, would you use me, forgive me, Father. I receive your Holy Spirit. I receive your promises and God, it, I, I just encountered his love. I, I got ignited with a fire of the Lord. And, and to last week, to be a part of this team, to be a part of you guys, to see God move in our church at that conference was so powerful. And Father, thank you, thank you. All the glory goes to him. I am a living testimony of the evil I did, the, what was meant to harm and, and the bad and all that. God uses it for the good when you surrender your life to him and put him in his rightful place. And I am so thankful to be a part of everything God is doing here at New Life. Can I get an amen, amen. in the house? Well, today, if you have your Bibles, 
Turn with me to Genesis chapter 50. I'm so pumped. We're going to look at this big issue. Someone say issue. And the issue is we have a hard time receiving that truth that was the enemy intended for evil. God will use it for good. God turns it around, and I want to look at this issue because this is what I know to be true. God moves through our mistakes. God's faithful in our failures. God's promises are bigger than my problems. I'm going to say that again. This try it ain't ready. God's promises are bigger than my problems that I face. The title of my message today is The Promise Through the Problem. Someone say the promise. promise. We're going to look at that every problem you and I face in this world. How many of you guys know there are 99 problems plus more, right? There's a lot of them. But God is faithful. He is true and true. And he moves, he moves, he moves. Whatever mistake man made, God's word is bigger and his word is truth. And his word has already spoken that he wants to move and he is moving. Amen? Amen. Why this is so important before we read scripture today is this. A lot of us in this room, including myself, we're stuck in receiving, receiving the promises of God which is disabling us to carry out the purposes of God, which then therefore we're stuck in our problems. And the truth is, this is what God wants to do. God wants to set us free and not let us get stuck in whatever situation. Because I want to talk about the problem today, but I do not want to give place to the enemy. I don't want to make the problem the bigger thing. God's promises is the bigger thing. His word is true and true, and we're going to look at what those promises are. God wants you and I to spiritually stand up and get past our problems so that we can receive the promises of God, so that we can carry out the purposes of God. There are amazing men and women of God in this church that God has so much more. But if we would get up out of our problems and we would step into the promises, we're gonna see the goodness that God has for you and I. Amen? Amen. So we're gonna look at Genesis chapter 50. I really wish we had more time to read the life of Joseph. How many of you guys with a show of hands, you know the, the story of Joseph? Stay with me, because this is really, really good. Joseph is a powerful, powerful story in the Bible. I encourage you this week, read chapters uh, Genesis 37 all the way to uh, chapter 50, and you, you're gonna see it through the life of Joseph, it's this overarching biblical theme of what God actually wants to do through you and I, but, and, and it's because of the sin and all the evil things that have taken place back in the garden. We're going to see even how Joseph went through some crazy, terrible stuff. To set up the whole story, to give you context, Joseph was an amazing man of God that had promises. God gave him a dream, and his brothers, how many of you guys have older brothers or older sisters? How many of you guys know they can be haters sometimes, man? <laughs> some of you have your brothers and sisters with you. Give them a little out. No, I don't do that. But Joseph had some promises by God. And we see that his brothers get jealous and they try to kill him, but instead of doing that, they end up selling him into slavery. And what we see is that the evil and the turmoil that took place in Joseph's life, God had the final say. And we see the problems that he was facing, God's promises were bigger. And we see the faithfulness, the faithfulness of God through the failures of man in Joseph's life. Joseph gets... If you know anything about Joseph, he gets thrown into prison. God promotes him, which is a sign of God's presence and his purpose, right? God ends up promoting him in this, this prison cell where he ends up being in Potiphar's house and he gets accused by Potiphar's wife, right? But then God is so faithful, what happens? He ends up being second in command in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh at the time. And we're gonna see in Genesis chapter 50 and verses 15 through 20 where God, he uses everything for the greater good. And I want us to read this passage so we can understand this big biblical concept. If you're there, verse 15, chapter 50, say, go. go. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? 
So they sent word to Joseph saying, your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now p please forgive, please forgive. Someone say forgive. Yes. Forgive the sins of your servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph did what? Verse 18, his brothers then came and threw themselves before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. I'm in the place of God. You intended to harm me, here it is, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. The saving of what? We see in chapter 50, verse 20, that there is a problem, and the problem is sin is taking place in the life of Joseph around him, and his brothers try bringing him down, but the promise is that God will use it for the greater good, and the overall purpose was what? To save many lives. Today, we're gonna look at, in order to understand this big biblical theme, we have to go back where it started. We have to look at the main problem because you and I have a lot of problems in this world. Can I get an amen in the house? Some of you have come through these doors with financial, mean, uh, financial crisis, a physical disability. Some of you, your marriage is literally hanging and you're needing God to come through. Whatever the problem may be, I want us to look at where it started so we can stop doing this. This is an issue, ready? Stop blaming God. God is not the issue. God is never the issue. We're gonna see in Genesis, I wanna read this, I want you guys to check this out. In Genesis chapter three, verses two through six, we're gonna see where sin is birth. You see, to give you in a bad story of this, God intended us to walk in harmony with him. He gave us free will. Someone say free will. Free will. And through the lie of the enemy, and through free will, we see that sin is birthed in this moment. And God is so good and gracious and we're gonna see his overall plans. If you are in Genesis chapter three, this is what it says. It says in verse two, the woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not, someone say not, eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will what? For you will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When woman saw the fruit of the tree was good for food, for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining a wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it as well. Wow. There's scripture right there. It was the woman's fault. No, I'm s <laughs> my wife here, I love you, baby. I don't, I don't think she's here. I, no, what we see in this moment is God gives Adam and Eve freedom and reign in the garden and he gives them free will. That's the God that we serve. He gives us free will. The choice is in our hands. And we see in this moment that problem, the problem, the problem has started. The first observation I want us to look at in order to understand this biblical concept is the problem. Someone say the problem. What we see is sin is birth in Genesis chapter three. And how many of you guys know in the world we live in today, there is sin that happens around us, there is sin that is happening to us, and there's even sin that happens through us. We are the ones committing it, am I right? In this moment, God created his creation. And the, the, the main purpose was, would be that God would be the creator and we would be his creation. And the issue today is that we find ourselves playing God when we were never created to be God. God is God, we are his creation. God has made us to follow him. He says go, we say where. Adam and Eve starts to play God in this moment and they start to define what is good and what is evil. And we are never supposed to be doing the position of what God is supposed to be doing and he's the one that tells us what is good and what is evil. We were never created to be God or to play God but to obey God. Obey God. 
And now there is evil in this world because Adam and Eve have caused all this turmoil. And the issue is we live in a sinful world. Can I get an amen? amen. And truthfully, sinful nature. We're born and now, how many of you guys know your two-year-olds, before they know how to pick up after themselves, they know how to throw a tantrum, right? <laughs> right? And the issue is there is sin happening. I, I, I remember growing up, I'm the youngest uh, uh, brother. I have three older brothers, an older sister, and two younger sisters. But for the longest time, I was the, the youngest sibling in my household. And I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna be honest with you. I did a lot of stupid things when I was younger. I don't know about you guys, but is it just part of your nature as a younger brother to really get your older siblings upset? Is that, is any younger siblings here? Is it just me? Can you guys shout me down? So I don't wanna be left here. Cause I, I would do everything to annoy my siblings. And I even shared a room with my older brother and I used to, I don't know, I should say it. I'm gonna say it. He went back to his mission trip, so he's no longer in the country, so I'm gonna say it. I used to, and he knows this, I used to, we used to get in fist fights, I used to fart on his pillow before he went to bed. And he would, we would throw blows, man. And I, I grew up in a household, listen, I grew up in a household where my dad would spank us and I got whooped and I used to get mad at my dad. I used to say, man, you're the problem. I had the audacity, this is how, demonic little child I was. I had the audacity to tell my dad one time that he was the Antichrist. <laughs> Pray for me. Pray for me. Yes, I am a redemptive work of Jesus Christ. Don't you judge me. Listen, listen. I thought my dad was the problem and I, and I was getting spanked and I got spanking was the problem. The problem was the stupid decisions I was making. I'm here to speak and preach on this right now. Some of you in this room are facing some problems. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, some of you are doing some stupid things. You think you can receive the financial blessings of the Lord but not give back what's first his, Malachi 3.10, bring it to the storehouse. Some of you guys think you can have God's blessings and covering but you're gonna live with your boyfriend and girlfriend and you want God to be in the middle but yet you're not married. Can we just be real today at church? We got 99 problems, but sometimes you and I are the main one. Yeah? We need to start looking at where the problem started. And regardless, here's my point, regardless of what's happening in your life today, because some of you are going through some crazy, intense stuff. Regardless, the point is, this is what I keep hearing in our community and it breaks my heart that God is the issue. Where are you at, God? God is never the issue. God will never be the issue. The issue isn't God. The issue is there is a devil that wants to take us out and we are a human nature where we're sinful. We, we do stupid things, right? And we have to stop pointing to God and say, God, it's your fault on this. It's your fault on that. You can make the decision to be in the presence of Lord to where he can radically change your life and be the person that he's called you to be, not buying into the lies of the enemy. And so in order to grasp the problem, we have to see that it started in the garden. God has never created this world to be uh, where we are his crea uh, creation to play God and be God. The truth is the devil is a liar and sin is real. The devil is a liar and sin is real. Romans chapter five, verse 15 beautifully says, the New Living Translation coming up on the screen, but there is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many, but even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this, uh, through this other man, Jesus Christ. How many of you guys are thankful for the person of Jesus Christ and the finished work that we're able to walk in? You see, the, the problem is that we got a lot of problems and we keep pointing our fingers back to God. And we need to start walking in the promises of God and start reading his scripture and so allow it to renew our minds, transform us and actually understand that God is not the problem. 
There are sinful people, and I myself made sinful decisions. We made sinful decisions, correct? Now, the big question this morning for all of God's people here is do you believe that God's promises are bigger than your problems? Do you believe that the promises of God are way bigger than the giants, the problems that you face today? Are you magnifying God's truth, his word, his promises? Or are you magnifying the problem in your life? Growing up, reading scripture, it, it, it's still a hard time understanding this concept that God's promises are a lot bigger than what I face and my problems. And that's a word for someone here today. The promises of the Lord are bigger than the problems you are facing today. God is faithful in the failures. God moves through the mistakes. I'm telling you, God's promises are bigger than our problems. So we see the problem. Now I want us to look at the promise. Someone say the promise. Second observation. You see, Joseph had a lot of evil, a lot of problems surrounding him. But God's promises were bigger. And we just read in chapter 50, verse 20, that what the enemy, what was intended to harm him, what did God do? He used it for the good. A lot of you in this room don't understand that this is an overarching theme of God's redemptive story. You're not reading your Bible. <laughs> Revelation, it ends with a new heaven and a new earth. We have the victory. Why do we get stuck in our problems when the promises are before us? The promises of God are bigger than whatever problems we face when we allow God's word to transform us and renew our minds. I want, I want to prove this to you. Genesis chapter 50, it ends with Joseph reuniting with his brothers. He ends up burying his father, Jacob, and he walks out all the promises that God had from the enemy was a liar, the enemy was evil, but God ended up flipping it around for the good. And then 400 years later, we get to the book of Exodus. This is so good. The narrative reads this, that at this moment, in time, there is a new Pharaoh reinstated in, and in, in overseeing Egypt. And we see Pharaoh, this character right now in the book of Exodus, is the most evilest dude ever in the Bible at this moment. At this moment, Pharaoh wants to enslave God's people, the Israelites, or in, when you read it, the Hebrew, the Hebrews, another name for God's people, talk about problems, right? He wants to enslave them, and he wants to build his kingdom, and he wants to wipe out God's people. Talk about some problems. We get into Exodus, and we now see that Pharaoh realized he can't do it by enslaving them. So you know what, he, you know what his commands are? This is so evil, so demonic. He wants the firstborn of every Hebrew child to be thrown into the Nile River. Talk about some problems, right? But let me tell you about the promises of God. Because the problem was, these babies are dying. God's people are going to be wiped out. Nope. God is faithful. God, is, God moves through and through. We see Moses is in the Nile River, ends up in Pharaoh's daughter's lap. And now Moses is the mouthpiece that sets God's people free. Talk about what the enemy intended for evil, God used for good. You don't like that? Okay, let's get to the New Testament then. See, there were these religious leaders called the Pharisees, and they thought they could put our Savior on the cross and kill him. Mm. Y'all ain't ready, man. You guys ain't ready for this. The devil thought he had Jesus pinned. Our Savior's on the cross crying out to Abba, Father, it is finished. Three days later, the tomb is empty. He's risen from the dead. You and I now have victory because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Talk about what the enemy intended for evil. God turned it for good. You got to see this biblical uh, theme throughout God's word. God's promises are bigger than you and I, our problems that we face today. And we see it countless throughout God's word. And could it be, could it be that, God's pro that your problems today are God's uh, promises for your tomorrow? What I mean by that is, could it be that if you're facing a trial today, 
that if you would hold on to Jesus and put him in his rightful place as King of kings and Lord of lords, that you would see yourself led through that very thing that is weighing you down right now? God's, listen, your problems are God's promises for tomorrow, man. I read his word and I'm like, wow, Lord, you have some amazing promises. Matter of fact, my favorite promise that God has given you and I is found in John chapter 14, 16 through 17 coming up on the screen. The promise of this Holy Spirit. And I will ask the Father, this is Jesus talking, and he will give you another advocate, comforter, helper, and who will lead, never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into what? All truth. The world cannot receive him because he, if he, uh, it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him, but you know him because he lives with you and now later and will be what? In you. The promise of the Holy Spirit leads you and I into all truth. If you receive his great promise of his spirit that resides in you and I when we say yes to Jesus and put him in his rightful place, then we will be led through any problem in any situation. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. I'm saying you have a way through it now because of the promise of his Holy Spirit. And so many of us are stuck in the problems of life today because we haven't received the promise of his truth. Therefore, we have no direction of truth. A lot of us in this room are going in circles. You're like a dog chasing your tail. Problem, 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 problem. When you have the spirit of God and recognize that he leads you into all truth, you will know how to get through that very thing that is trying to take you out. The promise, and this is, this is such a big thing we see, especially what I've noticed in, in our community. There are amazing men and women of God that come to our church. It chokes me up because I, I, I've been up here on the prayer team and I've heard your guys' prayers and I, I see the, the problems, I see the heartbreak, the heartache, all of it. Wayward kids, financial means, I, I see it. And man, oh man. But we come with our problems every single Sunday. And instead of receiving the promises of God, we get stuck in our problems. And you know what we do? Can I be honest today? We play church. You don't know what we do? We come, and this is what we do. Mama, Dada. Right we get our baby milk, because we're infants. I'm gonna be honest. This is what we do. Feed me. Oh, those songs weren't that good. No. No, I didn't, I didn't care for I didn't care for, uh, uh, you know, that, that offering. Pastor Andrew, the communion, dude, that was, that was not biblical. No, this is not breast milk. Get your mind out of the gutters. You guys are sinners, man. You're in the right place to be here. No, I'm t listen, this is what the narrative reads in Hebrews. The writer of Hebrews is telling the early church that they got some problems, and look at what they are going through. Look at what, what, what he writes. Coming up on the screen, it says, you have been believers uh, so long that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. You're like babies who need milk and can't eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Solid food is for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. We come into the presence of the Lord with our prob problems and we're spiritual babies needing a spiritual diaper change. Well, here we are. Some of you should be leading a life group by now. Some of you have the gift to speak an amazing life into others and, and you can't get past your problems so you're stuck trying to speak it to yourself. Some of you should be leading a ministry by now. And one of my biggest heartbreaks, I've been telling some of the staff and I, even pastor, one of my biggest heartbreaks is we keep asking God to move 
God has already moved on the cross 2,000 years ago. He sent his Holy Spirit to live in and through us. You want the move? You want God to move? We are the move of God. We come wanting revival. Go into the community and be the light of Jesus. People will never see God, but they will see the love of Jesus Christ in and through us. But we keep coming and we keep clinging to this. It's time to grow up spiritually. Can I get an amen in the house? I'm ready to see revival take place in the city of Otsnard through the people of God. Not, Lord, would you move? I sent my son, go! You have him, he's in you. The spirit of God wants to lead you into all truth. We have to receive the promises of God so we can get past our problems. Listen, God is faithful in failures and he moves through mistakes, but we have to receive it and we have to believe it in order to carry this out. I'm tired of the enemy spiritually molesting us. Listen to me, this is what he does. He puts us and he holds us down and he says that you don't have a voice. When God has birthed you for a time such as this, for a moment such as this, being uh, filled with the spirit of God to go out and see a, a community, a city change radically with the love of Jesus. Let's stop playing church games and let's see the love of Christ permeate all throughout the city of Otsnard. Can I get an amen in the house? Turn to your neighbor and say, it's time to move. The last observation I want us to look at today is the purpose. The big question is, you know, God, what are you doing? And it's like, you know what? It's the wrong question to ask. Lord, your purpose is simply this. Romans chapter eight, verse 28 coming on the screen. It says, and we know that in what? Some things? Only the good things? Bad things? We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. God, all things, Lord, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything God will use for the greater good if you get past your problems, put Jesus in his rightful place and allow him to lead you through it. He will do everything you can imagine. Immeasurably more, the Bible says. If you would get past getting stuck in your problems, God's purpose is this, to grow you and I, to stretch us, to build us up, to speak to us. It's in those hard moments and our problems that I learn the voice of my Savior more and more. It has been in the trials and tribulations of my life where my faith has grown in Jesus Christ, where I know his promises are true and true and true. His purposes are to grow you and to stretch you so he can use you. It's time to be mobilized. I want to see God move by the people of God. His word promises it. His purposes are meant so that we would grow in our faith, not get stuck and hindered by our problems. The promises of God are bigger than our problems and his purpose is that we would grow and we would see his kingdom come and his will be done. My heart breaks today because I've been in this moment where I bought into the lies. There are so many of us in this room that are stuck in our problems. And God wants to get you out of it by reminding you his biblical truth and show you this overarching theme that God works everything for the greater good when you put him in his rightful place and stop playing God and let him be God of your life. And I, I, I want us to be free today and grow spiritually mature by walking in the promises of God and getting past whatever problems you face. I don't even want to give the enemy a foothold by talking about our problems because God's words tells me that his promises are bigger. And so today, my prayer 
is that we would sing that song, what the enemy meant for evil. God, you will use it for good because your word has shown it time in and time out through the person of Jesus Christ, through your apostles, and through the people of God of 2019. So would everyone stand right where you're at as the worship team comes out. This is a moment for those that are stuck in your problems. Would you join me today? Would you join me at the altar of Jesus to take the position in the presence of the Lord to receive the promises of God to get past the problems that I'm facing? Would you join me if that is you right now? This is your moment and say, Lord, I want to believe that your ways are higher. I'm not going to allow my problems to have the final say. Would you come forward right now and stand in the position and in the presence of the Lord and receive the promises of God? Right now, move, come forward. This is for those that need to get unstuck. And let's sing this song. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for
Father, thank you that you are so good and gracious to us, Lord. Lord, forgive us for putting ourselves above you, exalting ourselves, thinking that we are the solution. You are the solution, Father. I pray for all of your people here today, Lord, that you would meet them right where they are at, Lord, and remind them that your promises is that you will carry them through whatever problems they are facing. Lord, the battle is yours, and what the enemy is trying to do, Lord, you're going to use it for the greater good, Lord. So, Father, we receive that truth today, and we walk in that, not allowing the lies of the enemy to uh, bring us down anymore, Lord. So, Father, thank you. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your word. That is truth. So, Lord, we receive that and we walk in it boldly. In Jesus' name we pray. All of God's people say amen. Amen.